Now speaking, John Sweeney, Vice President, Investor Relations. DXC Technology held their fourth quarter fiscal year 2023 earnings call on today's date with Mike Silvino, Chairman, President and CEO, and Ken Sharp, EVP and CFO. The call was webcast on the DXC Investor Relations website with accompanying slides. Certain non-GAAP financial measures were discussed with reconciliations to respective GAAP measures provided in today's earnings release and webcast slides. Forward-looking statements were made on the call and subject to known risks and uncertainties that could cause. Now speaking, Mike Silvino, President and Chief Executive Officer. DXC Technology had a successful Q4 and FI23, delivering revenue of $3.59 billion, organic revenue down 2.9%, increased EBIT margin from 7% in Q1 to 8.9% in Q4, over $700 million in free cash flow, non-GAAP EPS of $1.02, 21.4% YI growth, and book-to-bill ratio of 1.04. Four six offerings had a B2B over 1%. These results were achieved by inspiring and taking care of colleagues, focusing on customers, optimizing costs, and having a financial foundation in place. Going into FI24, DXC plans to maintain its investment-grade credit profile, expand free cash flow, deliver higher quality revenue, margin and EPS, and repurchase another $1 billion of its shares. Now speaking, Ken Sharp, Executive Vice President, Chief Financial Officer, in Q4, DXC's organic revenue declined 2.9%, adjusted EBIT margin was 8.9%, non-GAAP EPS was $1.02 and free cash flow was $269 million, all the highest levels in the last three years. Gross margin was up 250 basis points due to lower payroll-slash-contractor expense, divestitures and lower resale. Adjusted EBIT margin increased 40 basis points and non-GAAP earnings per share increased 18 cents compared to the prior year. GBS grew 3.3% organically, analytics and engineering grew 8.5%, applications declined half a percent, insurance software and BPS was up 5.9%, security was down 0.4%, and cloud infrastructure and IP outsourcing declined 10.5%. At the end of FI23, debt was at the target level of $4.5 billion, restructuring and TSI expense for the year was $232 million, $68 million lower than guidance and capital expenditures and capital lease originations were 6.3% of revenue, down 70 basis points. FI24 guidance is for organic revenue growth of negative half a percent to positive half a percent, adjusted EBIT margin of 8% to 8.5%, non-GAAP diluted earnings per share of $3.80.4.05, and free cash flow of $900 million. The board authorized an additional 1 billion share repurchase. Now speaking, Mike Silvino, President and Chief Executive Officer. In FI23, DXC made significant strides with a better culture, stronger customer relationships, a better sales model, revenue stability, expanded margins, and free cash flow. Additionally, they maintained their investment-grade credit profile while returning $1 billion back to shareholders. This momentum is being carried over into FI24, with plans for higher quality revenue, margin, and EPS, expanded free cash flow and returning another $1 billion to shareholders while maintaining their investment-grade credit profile. The team is excited and proud of the progress that has been made. Ken and Rob are working together to ensure a smooth transition, and overall, DXC is looking forward to continuing. Deutsche Bank analyst Brian Keane, Inquired, are DXC's IT services experiencing increased organic growth despite weakness in the market and other IT vendors? Mike Silvino replied, Brian received an update on the market and customer sentiment towards the company. The survey showed that customers see the company as essential, so they must spend money to use their services. There is uncertainty in hardware sales and innovative projects, but the GIS business remains stable. The book to bills for overall, GBS and GIS remain strong. This position allows customers to want the company to evolve with technology solutions. Deutsche Bank analyst Brian Keane inquired, Have we seen a significant improvement in free cash flow, with $737 million this fiscal year, and an expected $900 million for the upcoming year? Mike Silvino replied, Brian, we are confident in our ability to generate $900 million in free cash flow this year. This is based on taking out $737 million plus $70 million from Fonz Depot last quarter and managing CapEx better. We have seen this pattern for the past two years with the same team and feel confident that we can achieve this goal. Ken Sharp replied, I estimate Q1 to be down by $200 million, but I am confident that this will be recouped throughout the year as we have achieved this in the past two years. BMO Capital Markets Analyst Keith Bachman 
inquired, have you seen how artificial intelligence, AI, can help the revenue model you use? What do you expect your booking trends to be over the course of the year, given that book to bill is currently at 1.0 for this quarter? Mike Silvino replied, Keith, I brought AI to DXC four years ago and since then Platform X has been built. It uses predictive analytics to predict when hardware is going to fail, so we can get in front of clients and prevent issues. We're also using AI with project work, as it's able to deploy bots to fix problems without any human intervention. Our 20,000 people that do analytics and engineering have created data sets to train the algorithms. This allows us to use AI to both drive revenue and reduce costs. Mike Silvino replied, we strive to have a book-to-bill rate of over 1.0 each quarter. Last year, our quarterly book-to-bill rates were 0.87, 0.83, 1.36 and 1.04. We aim to keep revenue steady by keeping the annual book-to-bill rate around 1.0. Cohen and company analyst Brian Bergen inquired, can you estimate what the organic growth trajectory of the business would look like if your over-year revenue headwinds in fiscal 24 were removed? Mike Silvino replied, over the last two quarters, we have seen a decrease in revenue with minus 3.8 and minus 2.9. We are now guiding for minus 1 to minus 2 this quarter, but will turn positive towards the end of the year. GBS is expected to become a larger and more dominant part of our revenue by FI 2024. Our goal is to deliver for our customers, which will help us reach revenue growth in FI 24. Ken Sharp replied, I experienced a 170 basis point decline in organic revenue growth this quarter. However, services performed better than expected. Mike Silvino replied, We are taking a more disciplined approach to deal making this year and focusing on resale revenue with our operating committee. We are aiming to reduce infrastructure costs, eliminate data centers, contractors and employees, which will have a positive impact on our margins and revenue. This will ultimately result in improved quality revenue. Cohen and company analyst Brian Bergen inquired, can you provide more information on the underlying performance assumptions that are contributing to your growth guidance for 2024? Mike Silvino replied, GBS is expected to grow more than it did in FI 23 due to analytics, insurance, and apps. GIS will shrink more than it did in FI 23. Security is stable based on ITO, information technology operations. Modern workplace is expected to get flat from minus 15.3 to minus 5.3 next quarter. This mix for FI 24 will be. John Sweeney replied, I understand that the GIS will be shrinking at a lower rate than expected. City analyst Ashwin Shervekar inquired, is there a fixed number of ways enterprise spenders respond to macro concerns? What impact would analytics, applications and insurance have on GBS and GIS, and how can risk be mitigated in the outlook? Mike Silvino replied, Ashwin, GIS and Modern Workplace are key offerings that customers demand as they seek cost savings from competitive deals. Revenue has been stable in the last two quarters and is expected to remain so in FI24. GBS is focusing on value-based relationship sales with seven senior leaders at the forefront of doing coaching, managing details, and building a pipeline. Insurance is a strong business with software the industry needs and value in cost savings. Project work is more stable due to the Russian issue being addressed a year ago. City analyst Ashwin Shervekar inquired, I appreciate the steady performance Ken, and I'd like to ask one more question about free cash flow. What are the main elements of the bridge from here to fiscal 2024? Ken Sharp replied, This year, we achieved 737 million in revenue and expect to reach 800 million next year. We are targeting a margin of 8 to 8.5%, which includes a 70 basis point reduction in pension income. Working capital has been reduced from negative 13% to negative 3%. We also anticipate CapEx and capital leases as a percent of revenue to decline 70 basis points this year. City analyst Ashwin Shervekar inquired, Did you understand that the $1 billion buyback is 19% of my share base? Deep dive equity research analyst Rod Bourgeois inquired, are we seeing an ability to win competitive deals without sacrificing profitability terms, and has the Edo market changed enough to enable our infrastructure-like model to come to fruition? Mike Silvino replied, we have seen an increase in demand for our services as customers come to us with their competitors' work. We are choosy about the work we take on and are not willing to extend payment terms, fund transitions or increases in energy. Despite this, we have seen progress in terms of better prices and Gartner Quadrant recognition as a trusted partner. Deep Dive Equity Research Analyst Rod Bourgeois inquired, Have you moved to a new operating model and what is the main difference between it and the prior one? Is the new model mostly in GBS and does it also flow into GIS? 
Can you provide more background on what prompted this move? Mike Silvino replied, Rod and I have implemented a new operating model across the entire company. Previously, the business was run by region, however this was not efficient for analyzing offerings or driving revenue through margin to meet financial performance. The new operating model has chosen top leaders to focus on growth differentiation and manage details down to the account level. This has been planned for an entire year and Ken and Rob have contributed significantly to make it successful. We are expecting to see the results of this new model soon and it will be based on value provided to customers, cost savings, new ideas, increased revenue, margin expansion, EPS expansion, and free cash flow. Moffat Nathanson analyst Lisa Ellis inquired, Mike, as DXC begins a new fiscal year, can you give us a sense of your medium-term goals for the company? Mike Silvino replied, I see a leadership team that is capable of executing our goals of increasing revenue, expanding margins, EPS and free cash flow by Phi apostrophe 24. We have already demonstrated success in recruiting quality talent which will help us compete and remain stable in the IT services market. Moffat Nathanson analyst Lisa Ellis inquired, have I completed the portfolio reshaping with the $250 million in additional asset sales, or should I anticipate further divestitures or investments? Mike Silvino replied, we are currently focusing on transitioning to infrastructure light, which involves shedding our data centers. This is a fixed cost in order to go through this transformation and will save us from having to own data centers. We plan to have completed this process by 524 and feel confident that we can deliver the 250. Bank of America Merrill Lynch analyst Jason Kupferberg inquired, have there been any changes in the go-to-market, deal terms and deal structure since Mike joined that has made infrastructure light a reality? Mike Silvino replied, under my leadership, the competitive landscape has changed drastically. We are now at the top of the heap and able to ask for different terms. Our balance sheet is much cleaner than it has ever been. We have implemented data centers and successfully flipped contractors to employees to generate more margin. We expect to deliver higher quality revenue, margin, EPS and free cash flow in FI24, while maintaining our investment grade profile and delivering $1 billion back to our shareholders.